Good morning ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series and I know, I know, Monday morning another working week has begun commiserations to all of you chaps out there with proper jobs I feel your pain, still it must be nice to earn money uh, I've got something a little bit different for you guys today it is going to be a ladder match and in that sense it's very much the same as everything I've always done uh, but the more astute of you will realize in the scrolling title TA for Life features and he is one of the handful of people who I would trust to hand me a replay and say don't watch it it's castable it doesn't desync and it's amazing go cast um, and he's also uh, the sort of chap as well who uh, is just as happy giving me a replay where he loses as when he wins so we have no idea how this one is going to go I don't even know if it's going to be an epic I assume it's reasonably substantial otherwise he probably wouldn't have given it to me but I don't know how what's going to happen I don't know how long it's going to go on for I'm probably going to miss all of the uh, important bits of action so you're probably not going to enjoy this cast at all but hey it'll be fun finding out either way it's going to take place on Eye of the Storm, so let's go on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on. So, all very familiar with Eye of the Storm. Let's take a look at our players. Up here in the top left, in the blue corner, it's TA for Life going his ever so customary Aeon. And uh, he'll be opening first land and uh, shoving a couple of P Gens next to the mexes as well can take the edge off those early upgrades of course you'll be wanting to on a map like this you want to get your eco core eco upgraded as soon as possible because you're not physically going to be facing off against your opponent who might be well stuck somewhere about here on say a, a five kilometer map or round about here much closer proximity so anyway there's ta let's take a look at his opponent down here at the bottom right in the red corner going seraphim it's Silver Eye. He's opening first land, second air. And while we wait for these guys to warm up, incidentally, guys, uh, Zep still, as far as I'm aware, looking for replays that desync so he can try and investigate and correct the issue. I know I've mentioned it a bunch of times, but uh, the, there are not that many more posts being posted in the thread. So I'm going to keep doing it until you guys get on with it. So yeah, that thread, if you need it, just shout at me in the comments section and I will uh, throw it in the description below this video but it's easy to find it's under the general discussion tab on the forums go check it out anyway as these guys are warmed up now you can see the early scouts going out for both players TA for life taking advantage of the floaty floaty naughty naughty scouts got his couple of uh, spirits trundling across the map there one's gonna park up I imagine in the middle no he's not he's going straight over here one to the harbor area and the other sort of in the southern portion right in the middle of the map two Selens splitting out either side for silver eye and they're queued up to the two other starting locations one in each corner so he wants to get an idea of what's coming that way obviously hopefully to give him an advantage in that respect mirage en route that's a scout plane for aeon for ta and also one down here the cellar isle there's lots of suicles cellar isles as far as uh, Seraphim go, but they don't seem to have any really congruency. The is a submarine and the Cellar Issel is a scout plane. I don't really know how that works, but never mind. I'm not in charge of Seraphim linguistics, as many of you are well aware. But a uh, couple of interceptors out for both of these guys, trying to hunt down those early scout planes. Not going too well for either player so far. TA for Life has his ACUs trundling south with that. Where's he uh, going for? He's coming straight down here and going straight for a PD build. You can see the Eruptor queued up there if we can get the relief of the land out of the way. Wants to try and secure that as soon as possible. Where is Silver Eye going? Silver Eye has also picked the bottom left. So it's going to be ACU on ACU on the bottom left and T1 spam versus T1 spam top right but we've got a little bit of an airdrop in terms of engineers for T8 four engineers going to the front immediately starting to work on a mass extractor not forgetting of course you've got two very important large rocks that are worth recycling he's also going to throw together a land factory further back there but I think he's uh, definitely got the advantage up here so far he's got a lot of build capacity up here and he's got it earlier than Silverite can see a uh, handful of thams just dotted around this top walkway we have got engineers on route though for silver eye and straight to the top 
and they're actually going to drop in amongst the core four mass points in the top right expansion. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Aurora in the area. How is that going to affect things? A little bit of micro there from Silver Eye adjusting the trajectory. But immediately the Spirit and Aurora home in on the build capacity. Two engineers down. He starts trying to build a PD. But uh, he's going to struggle. Nice, quick blocking there with the transport absorbing some of that damage that finally goes pop and he's gonna manage he actually manages to complete the point defense but somehow ta for life finishes the last of that build capacity off so he doesn't get the chance to establish any kind of manufacturing and uh, ta for life should be able to bring a fervor in you can see it trundling in there he'll be able to knock out that eruptor and that might be a nice little minor victory up top right early in this one for TA. Silver Eye parked down here, not getting a great deal done at the moment. TA for Life throwing down a PD. A couple of land factories queued up as well. So it looks like he's got the advantage in the bottom left and the top right, and he's got the central island bagged as well. Currently, no advantage on Eco just as yet, but certainly he'll be able to pull that back if he can hold on to this extra map control that he should be about to grab that point defense has succumbed to further fire engineers are now pouring in to grab those mexes and set up more defenses in there and ta for life has secured when i say secured he has got established in the bottom left he has his pd and is oh, 50 to 60 percent done on that second land factory the first one already producing engineers silver eye a little bit further back to the right starting to work on some land factories of his own but he is behind in that respect as well and a cheeky little drop attempt there from ta gets thwarted a whole bunch of interceptors there from silver eye waiting for just such a maneuver pops that out of the sky but you can see ta well and truly embedded now in the north eastern corner He's not playing too aggressively. He probably could have his ACU down here building some PD. He's building more land factories for the moment. A couple of Auroras emerge from the sea over here. Don't last too long though. Bomber overhead as well as a Tham managing to deal with those. But engineers moving forward trying to establish a defensive perimeter with T1 torpedo launchers. But Silver Eye well aware of what's going on he's got the radars dotted about he's got pretty good intel coverage in fact moves in with his naval units to deal with it we've got t2 navy in place now for silver eye ta for life still operating off t1 so tech advantage in naval terms to Silver Eye, of course. Aeon generally with the slightly weaker navy. However, that is mitigated somewhat on a map like this where it's all rather close quarters. You don't have a great freedom of movement if it does get to a significantly large naval fight in this game. The ability to micro out the way of the Exodus and its fire will be significantly reduced, make it just that much harder. Berber's looking like they're going to take down one of those Seraphim land factories in the bottom left. Yes, they do. Silver Eye to the right on here is going to throw an upgrade on his comm, but look at this, looking very comfortable now down in the bottom left, TA, but still Silver Eye ahead in Eco. He's just sitting back, teching up his core mexes he's still got a way to go on t2s as well so he can stay ahead here if he commits to that and this is why early map control doesn't necessarily mean a win if your opponent techs up core mass faster than you can uh, expand and gets ahead of you in eco there is a window of opportunity for him to 
finish it there in the mid game. TA for life moving in now with his com. Silver Eye having finished that upgrade. That's not the. Uh, no, he didn't. He must have abandoned it. No upgrades on that Seraphim commander. So it's not looking great at the moment map-wise for Silver Eye. He's got a nice air force though. That is something. And now he's got destroyers moving into this harbor area. Dealing with the Sylphs very easily indeed. Wants to stay away from TA's comm. Could of course just overcharge it. No, he can't. 4,000 max power. TA having not needed overcharge yet. Under attack. To be unable to dispatch it with one. The life forced back onto shore. Looking very comfortable up there in the top. And now we're seeing cruisers on the field as well. This is going to be handy for Silver Eye indeed. He's going to be able to sting these expansions from range. And that eruptor, the first to feel the pain. How is TA for life responding to this T2 Navy? Well, he's still building more naval factories, but not currently teching to T2 as yet. Certainly the emergence of this cruiser in the center of the map. Going to hand over even more of an air advantage to Silverite. The silk bites the dust. This could be really bad news for TA. Cruiser and destroyer incoming. He's trying to build silks as quickly as he can. Especially with that cruiser back here that can just bombard at range. None of these engineers are safe. Uh, same could be said for the naval yards as well. However, over on the eastern edge of the map, a few units from TA just wandering around, or wandering down that corner. We have got more naval factories springing up in the middle. The destroyer gets right in here, straight after the frigates, just to finish off these engineers as quickly as possible. Now we're getting some com on com action potentially. And that looks like Silver Eye might have the gun upgrade there. Yes, he does. As he ducks back into the water. He needs to be quite so timid. He's obviously very aware that he's lost the bottom left hand corner. But certainly, this T1 is nothing to be afraid of at the moment with the amount of health he's got and that gun upgrade. Engineers wiggling their way towards the destroyer, trying to get a reclaim on it. Silver Eye paying attention is going to maneuver out the way. A second destroyer joins this small fleet. And now no build capacity on these naval yards. Nothing to help repair them. That's going to be the end of those. Fortunately, TA has started naval facilities in other areas of the map, he's got one up over here at top right expansion, also one near the middle, starting to produce submarines out of them. But this is not good at all. Two of the core mechs is now out of commission for TA. TA still ahead on Eco though, 43 to 53. How are we doing on Reclaim? Silver Eye wandering around 2,300 and 50 TA for life conversely 9400 banked so far so a significant advantage on reclaim in this early game but he's got to be concerned about that 
assault on his main base. TA for life marching on Silver Eyes commander with his T1 and his ACU. TA for life not looking too good though, taking long range destroyer fire at the same time. 5,700 hit points left. Silver Eye also having to contend with a large quantity of fervors. Needs to keep moving. He's dropped considerably in the last minute or so, down to around 5,402. Ducks back under the water. But look at this lovely little run by on the eastern edge of the map from TA. A whole bunch of Auroras, Fervors in the center of Silver Eye's core base. And this is arguably more dangerous for Silver Eye than Silver Eye's Navy in amongst TA's home base. Because, of course, Silver Eye's Eco relies much more predominantly on these teched up core mexes. TA for life relying more on map control at the moment. But look at the amount of frigates and subs he's amassed in a relatively short space of time from two T1 naval yards. Trying to finish off this T2 naval HQ. That would be quite the blow to Silver Eye. Meanwhile in the bottom left, Silver Eye emerging from the water, pounding these land factories. Where's TA for Life's comm? He's back here under some shield coverage and he's got some oblivion turrets to keep him company as well. That should afford him good protection as well as that shield gen and as well as the T2 HQ that's right by him as well. Currently spitting out flak and blazes. But all of the build capacity slaughtered around that HQ and now the HQ succumbs to fire as well. So no more destroyers emerging on the field for Silver Eye. Very nice play from TA countering the naval threat by building elsewhere and then sneaking that T1 in. But he's still got a number of vessels about the map. He's probably going to want to get back up here and finish out off this uh, destroyer to ensure these two naval yards survive. Forward expansion on the peninsula here for Silver Eye under further bombardment now. There it goes. So 39 mass per tick. Well, 41 now for TA for life and just 29 for Silver Eye. See what a difference losing just a couple of these inner mexes has made to his economy. Now, this is going to be quite close. Destroyer down to 3,000 hit points, but still a bunch of T1. He's got to finish off. He's also got bombers to help him. It's about to dip into the red. That uh, torpedo defense making quite a significant difference here. If it wouldn't have been more sensible to go after the frigates first. Actually not, of course. Aeon frigates. Really any issues there and uh, that is also submerged. So much you can do in that regard. It looks like uh, Silver Eye is going to be able to hold on to that Bay Area. Vitally important ensures the survival of the original base. Silver Eye unable to make any more advance into this bottom left hand corner. Thankfully for him though does have that cruiser in the bay. I imagine volcanoes are the order of the day. You can see TMD going up there for TA. One volcano in place. And a second one to join it. And it's going to be very hard for Silver Eye to affect any great significant damage now with just the one cruiser. Needs to be really careful. Doesn't want to lose that cruiser. Destroyer tidying things up nicely. The cruiser up here 
under threat. But look at what he's done to TA's original bases. Effectively, very little left. Original mexes at T1 only. Still a 20 mass deficit between these two guys. And climbing, in fact, TA jumps to 53 against 29. We have got T2 Air, and we're starting to see Volthus appear on the scene for Silverite. T2 gunships in play. And it's uh, fair that ni say that neither guy has any kind of substantial air force. But of course, these Vulthus can operate around the map using the cruisers as guides. All they have to do is stay in range of that cruiser, and if they get into trouble with interceptors, they pull back to it. And that should be the end of their problems but TA for life having secured once again the bottom left now feels in a comfortable position to move out with uh, what a horde of T2 lots of blazes lots of ascendants and a few asylums as well no obsidians in the mix but uh, what's good about this of course is it's an entirely hover based little force that means he'll be able to go just about anywhere he pleases which is no bad thing on a map like this he splits them up goes for the two different resourcing options on the peninsulas it's going to eat into silver eyes mass production even more 49 to 23 silver eyes still hasn't retaken this core mass point it's quite extraordinary really is moving over this side just be en route to do so but that's a lot of gunships he's now got access to but he's not going to be able to comfortably use them to fend off this ground attack not with all of the ascendants and asylums down here silver eye sends over a test of gunship to see what he's facing and doesn't like the look of that at all and he might have to bug out and yield this bottom right hand base. This is not good at all. 25 minutes gone in this one. And if TA for Life is successful in punching through here, this is surely going to be it. Silver Eye's not going to make it easy for him, though. Starts spamming T1 and T2 point defense. The question is, will he get it up in time to defend? Blaze is having some problems negotiating the cliff there. And. T8 for life is going to change tack. That single solitary T1 PD just enough to discourage him from pushing on and trying to cause more damage. Another cruiser parked in that original bay, but look at the success that the Volthus are having up top. They're going to want to take down this Seeker, and then they should have free reign to dispatch the rest of this base. Problem is, though, is this bottom left base for TA looking comfortable indeed. And now he's even getting some sea based defenses in place. It's been quite the mobile conflict, this one. Mechs down, land factory down going to be the end of the top right base but look at that silver eyes eco his income dropping down to just 18 there i'm assuming that might have been power fluctuation but well, down to 21 again no, that is literally where he's at slight uh, discrepancies there being displayed because of reclaim take a look at where these guys are actually on in terms of reclaim 19,000 banks so far for ta for life just 4,000 for Silver Eye. That's a huge difference. And you put that on top of the mass income that TA for Life is getting as well. You have to give it to Silver Eye. That is uh, impressive that he's in this one at all. Albeit slightly behind. 
done a pretty phenomenal job so far by switching tactics in good timings. Now these Volthus having a whale of a time literally cleaned out now that top right hand corner and now probably going to work their way around the top. Here for life, not committing to any anti air players yet. I mean, he is producing interceptors, but at no great speed or haste. He's got a lot of ground units. Three interceptors finally get dispatched to deal with these Vulthus. And they should be able to deal with them. That's two left now. Nice work indeed. If uh, Silverai wants to continue with this airplay, he needs to get more inties on the field. And I'm astonished that he hasn't rebuilt this mechs on his doorstep. Three more Vulthus still working their way through on the top left, trying to stop TA for life from getting re-established in his original base. Well, that's a lot of mass as well for Silverite to bin, not being able to defend those gunships. Twenty-nine minutes gone somehow. Silverite still in play. Now he's going to go after some of these ground units, and that's a very bad idea. And he immediately <laughs> recognizes so, pulls out, having lost a couple of gunships there, I think. TA for Life still not feeling like he's got enough on the ground to cause any major damage to this base. I cannot believe this mass point still hasn't been taken. I don't uh, go on about it a lot, but usually at this level, it's uh, not a mistake you expect them to make. Something much more symptomatic of a Joe game. Cruiser doing what he can against these land factories on this peninsula. That's quite peculiar. It almost looked like uh, TA for Life control Cade those engineers. Lots of strange go goings on in this one already, but a nice little airdrop of engineers now to the center aisle. And having recently been cleared out by a combination of cruiser and Vulthu fire, it's now safe for him to expand. And pick up a few extra mexes. Silver Eye using his commander now to try and bust this northern blockade that Tape Life has been using to prevent Silver Eye from expanding back up the eastern edge of the map. And now we're starting to see some Exodus class destroyers emerge on the field. TA for Life making the transition to T2 Navy. Silver Eye submerges that destroyer turning into submarine mode and manages to defeat the Exodus with 600 hit points remaining. He's probably not going to be able to hang on to his cruiser though, unable of course to assist with that destroyer. Let's risk losing it himself as well. Right, now making more use of the mass dotted around. Still hasn't taken that mechs. Does have T3 land HQ though, and Otham's rolling out towards the west. What have we got on the ground down here? There's just these two Oblivion turrets back here. And a lot of vulnerable stuff on ground. It's not going to be able to contend with T3 land. Under 
how much that's going to affect things. Interesting because Silver Eye still dramatically behind, but TA for Life cannot find a way at the moment to finish this one off. And an attempt at a grab to the top right, thwarted once again by these Ascendants. Engineers perish in that one. Lasers pouring through in the middle, once again cutting down Silver Eye in his attempt to expand. Silver Eye just cannot get out of that bottom right hand corner. T1 meets T2 up here between these two guys. T8 for Life going to emerge victorious in this little theater as well. Coming up to 33 minutes gone. Silver Eye wants to use these cruisers a little bit more defensively. Pull in these gunships when you get under pressure from these interceptors and use the flak coming off the cruisers to shoo away those inties. Losing one gunship there, but still somehow managing to hold on to the second. Or T1 Mexes biting the dust for TA. And really, it's quite astonishing that the Eco hasn't moved on in any respect for about the last 20 to 25 minutes. They've been in exactly the same situation now. Neither player unable to make advances on that side of things, but this is a nasty, nasty group of T2 in the bay down here for... Silver Eye, as well as the Othams emerging onto the front line. Around about the same time, two naval factories taken out, one more to go T1 wise, and then the T2 Naval HQ. There is a very badly dis beaten up Exodus class destroyer, very badly hit indeed. Right at the back there under shield coverage. A couple of TMDs. But no great naval defenses. not willing to rush forward. Probably a wise idea. TA for life waiting on the beach and he sure as hell has overcharge now. 9,000 power queued up in the tank and ready to go. Cute little expands onto the peninsulas for Silver Eye but he's not going to be able to hang on to them. Engineers now moving out to cap them. Silver Eye pretty far forward with his com. But uh, he's not under any threat naval-wise, and uh, TA for Life not focusing on the air either. So he's relatively safe. As long as he doesn't expose himself to too much danger on the land, I think it's fair to say that he's close enough to the water if he's getting in any trouble with this land, which I don't think he will, but if he does, he can just creep back underwater. And he's going to see if he can clear this out now. Overcharge collapses all of those shields. In a second tears a hole in those troops. Tier for Life going to back up in the face of that one. And he's busy erecting defenses further up. A couple of eruptors probably going to be in place by the time Silver Eye gets there, assuming he continues to push that way. Quite surprised, actually, that he didn't make more of a play in here. There was only that damaged Exodus. I suppose there's always the concern of the land units, the blazes that could be waiting there, ready to rush him. He did have three destroyers and a cruiser. That would have caused some major damage. And now he's got a couple of Exodus class at the mouth of the harbor and a whole bunch of asylums to worry about. Silver Eye continuing to press up top. Blazes falling back. We'll soon be in range of the eruptors. First one opens up. Silver Eye's response 
to back up slightly. Overcharge takes it down to half health. The second one will finish it off. Silverai not currently interested in pushing that hard. Instead, he's going to press down bottom with Thams and Othams. Takes down a shield gen and a hydro. TA ghosting these land forces and still just a couple of oblivion turrets in place T2 wise but he's hurriedly constructing eruptors as quickly as he possibly can but that is not looking good Otham's breaking through now first oblivion down second oblivion down just the eruptor to worry about and uh, this is TA for life's power grid if this goes down that's not gonna be good at all of course he doesn't want to be sitting on top of these P gens when they blow because that will take out almost all of his Othams but I guess he'll be satisfied with that little push what does that do to TA for life's eco doesn't kill it completely certainly takes the edge off his ability to expand and once again Silver Eye moves into the harbor with these guys all moving backwards to help defend against the Othams. The mouth of the harbor now open. One of the destroyers out of commission for Silver Eye. But also one of the Exodus is down for TA for life. Just one left. And once again, the blazes re emerge into the harbor causing yet more problems. Silver Eye in the meantime with his ACU has taken down one of the Eruptors. Beautiful overcharge takes down about six engineers at least. And T2NG's moving forward. If he can hold his ground and knock out these, that would be ideal. He doesn't want him re-establishing another perimeter, this time with T2PD. Coming up to 40 minutes gone in this one, and now Blaze is catching up to that T2 Navy. Silver Eye forced to back out. TA for Life still ahead, Eco 60 to 33, but you look at the way the game's going, it's not looking great for him right now. Silver Eye busy bullying. The forces up in the top right, making excellent strides in the bottom left. Now we've even got Suthanus in play. We've got the Athena, Opal Shield Gen for Seraphim, considerably better than the Asylums. As well, you'd expect T3 versus T2. Life trying to throw together more PD. Uh, it's done a pretty nice job of re establishing that power grid as well. Trying to throw together as many PD turrets as he can. That's not going to help him contend with the mobile artillery that's now parked just to the east of that bottom left base. Silver Eye still not pushing with the com. All the action for the moment seems to be centered around the bottom left. And that T2 HQ out of commission. So no more destroyers for the moment. New Naval factory is being built once again in the top left hand corner. But this destroyer now able to park in the bay. TA for life taking a huge amount of fire right at the front. Needs to be really careful. This looks like a horrible idea. No. Yeah, I'd say. Oh, man. TA for life misjudging the situation. Completely up front there. 
getting nailed by the Othams, but certainly very entertaining get game. Silveride did a fantastic job to hold on there. He was behind on Eco essentially for the entire entirety of that game. But uh, TA for Life just couldn't keep on top of the Navy. And ultimately, probably might have been facing his demise anyway. I think that's fair to say this bottom left-hand corner was done for. And if that goes down, what's TA for Life got left? He's got an undeveloped top left. He's got an undeveloped top right. All of his power was down here. Can't actually see a thing through here. And it's, it's T2 Mexes, of course, in the bottom left. Everything else is T1. So... That was a desperation move, really. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. As always, more to come from me in the future. In the meantime, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.